So, um, bad news, right? Bad news. I, I, I found this out um, yesterday. And, um, you know, uh, Sonia Massey, a 36-year-old woman, um, you know, she was unalive by a deputy cop. Now, you know, this all started, you know, she um, literally thought it was like a prowler in her area, um, you know, an intruder. And so the cops and deputies, they showed up, you know, they did a little runs around her area. And then they, you know, knocked on the door to get her attention. And uh, she slowly approached there. And um, they were talking, but things start to get escalating for no apparent reason, right? Now, when she, uh, yeah, she was trying to find her ID, and then that, that cop was definitely very unprofessional from the start, anyway. But um, speaking of all that commotion, whatever, they didn't find any intruder. The cop noticed Sean Grayson, he noticed that, hey, okay, it's a pot of boiling water, you know, I'll just, you know, that's a safety protocol. Can you go ahead and just turn it off? All right, she's like, all right, cool, whatever. She walked over there, you know, turned it off and actually dumped it. Now, now I had to watch the video a few times. All right, she dumped it. So it's pretty much no intent, even if his uh, state of mind thinking that she was, he was going to get thrown, uh, you know, boiling water on him, right, and hurt. So um, she picked up the oven mitts like any normal person would, poured it out. And uh, I think that made it, she made a joke or I don't know, maybe she was intent, but because this definitely was a demon. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. She said that. And so according to this perspective in this video, uh, and his, uh, the body cam footage from her, uh, from his partner, he ended up pulling his gun. He said, you better F and not, I'll shoot you in your effing face. Things escalated so quickly for no apparent reason. So he pointed the gun at her, even though now Sonya Massey didn't have no intentions, no intentions, you know, what she's going to do with him, you know? So, um, no intentions and everything. And, uh, you know, she, of course, you know, she was, you know, it's that fight or flight. She was like, man, this man has a, a pointed a gun at me. Oh my goodness. I was asking for help. So she, uh, she, you know, surrendered. She dropped, shot the pot, whatever, you know, she, she didn't have the pot in her hand and she ended up, you know, ducking. And then she came back up and got shot right in the head, man. And it, you know, it was, it was really crazy too. Um, you know, he didn't want to render no type of aid. He even informed his, uh, his partner like, Hey, don't, don't go ahead and, um, you know, don't run her eight to her. You know, I shot her in the head. Uh, it was super crazy, man. And, um, you know, for something that's very senseless, uh, it almost brought me to tears because um, when her father testified, it was um, attorney Benjamin Crone, civil rights attorney, was talking about this. Yes, and they did charge him for first degree murder, which I think they should. Um, it's definitely premeditated. And, you know, because it was no intent for that. I mean, literally. I mean, you was definitely far away. Plus, it was no water in the pot. She poured it out. Like, I mean, she reacted because you were reacting, you know, pointing a gun at her. Like, you think she was going to go kid up and just throw the pot at you? Like, it was ridiculous, man. Um, you know, no de-escalating type of tactics here and techniques. And because uh, I watched this video multiple times before I, I start getting emotional. But when our father was saying, like, in 1908, uh, the NAACP was started. And, you know, the history started by, you know... Uh, a lot of activists too and some white social workers as well like wb du bois you know idb wells a black journalist and then um that's the whole foundation was um uh, starting in springfield illinois to combat against violence against uh, black uh, communities from white mobs you know they used to bomb like uh, the communities and terrorize black communities so they had to form the national association advancement of color people and um, he was just basically saying like we're still dealing with this type of stuff day to day and, um, you know, it's it's really unfortunate. It really is. Um, looking at this man, it, it's, you know, he's awaiting trial right now. So he's going to fight it, obviously. And um, he was advocating too. Um, the father was advocating for that George Floyd uh, Protection Act. Now, thank God Vice President uh, Kamala Harris was speaking on this. Of course, President Biden said something about it as well. It was very appropriate. Uh, you know, they kind of, you know, was passing through that, that law. Uh, from the Senate as well in June 2020, 2021. And, you know, with the police and George Floyd Policing Act, uh, that's going to probably, that's going to incorporate like, okay, the ban of, you know, chokeholds, uh, things of that nature, uh, de-escalation of forces. Um, it's going to prevent immunity, you know, from uh, a lot of, uh, from cops that convict, that are convicted of crimes, you know, um, due to their, uh, what they did on in their profession. Um, also, too, I'm reading this, too, is creates a national um, police misconduct registry. So the registry will actually track police misconduct and ensure that officers with a history of sex abuse, excessive use of force or other misconduct cannot move between departments and their uh, recruits were following them. Yeah, the records were following them. Meditating data 
Mandated data um, collection. The act requires the collection of data on police encounters and the use of force, broken down by race, gender, disability, and religion to identify and address patterns of dis um, discriminatory practices. Um, body cameras and dashboard cameras. Uh, the act mandates the use of body cameras and dashboard cameras by federal officers and encourage local law enforcement agencies to adopt uh, similar practices. Training and community-based po um, policing. Uh, the bill includes provisions for improved training on de-escalation. That is key. That's what we need, right? And techniques and uh, encourages community-based uh, policy, uh, police uh, policy and uh, strategies to foster trust between law enforcement and community. So uh, this definitely need to be passed. But um, I can feel him. He will never see his daughter again, not on this earth, but in the next life. Uh, but it's um, it's definitely senseless. It's definitely unfortunate, man. So um, yeah. Like I said, uh, Sean Grayson, he didn't even have his um, body cam footage on until after the shooting. Yep, so, yeah, I mean, really no intent there. She just said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus, and you took offense to that you was afraid of your life, saying that, oh, she came at me with a pot. Well, she clearly didn't. <laughs> she literally let go of the pot that was empty, and she looked at you, and she dug, and she had her head back up, and you shot her, so... um very unfortunate, man. So my condolences to the family. I'm not going to draw this video too long. Um, like I got some other videos coming out as well uh, today. Um, talking about VP, Kamala Harris. But yeah, justice need to be served. Yep, so um, my uh, my thoughts and prayers to the family. It's really hard making this video. But you guys continue to like, comment, subscribe, share this video. It's your boy, Only Jr. I'm out.